What's up and welcome back to another day of YouTuber. Today's vlog is going to be a little bit different. I originally went into filming this night. I had a night to myself and I went into it thinking like, oh, I'm going to film a little spiritual self-care night. It's been busy, chaotic lately. There's been lots going on and I knew I wanted to take this night where Ryan, Ryan had hockey so he'd be gone for a little while and I would have some open space, some open time to really reground and reconnect with myself, especially with just how busy things have been. This is definitely not something I do every single night. However, whenever I do feel like I'm really ungrounded, I feel very chaotic or I feel very anxious or emotional or whatever it is, I will set aside some time eventually or at some point to do a couple things that help me feel more, more grounded within myself, more connected to my intuition. And this was one of those nights. Lately, I've been feeling, by all accounts, just a lot more anxious. I haven't had time to really sit with and process through and I'll notice myself going about my day and I'll just catch myself holding my breath or like not breathing fully deep or just feeling that flutteriness, you know, where it's like, feels like your hands are almost like pins and needles or it's hard to like anchor down and, and get a full sentence out without catching your breath. So it really ended up turning into almost like an anxiety self-care night. It started off with some yoga and I normally start by just sitting and breathing with my eyes closed and really feeling into my body because it's in my experience that whenever I am feeling any kind of emotion, but especially things like anxiety, I usually tense up in certain areas of the body and it can move around. But most recently it's been like in my mid back. I began to really just flow into that with my stretches and really try and do some stretches that opened up my sides and opened up my back. Am I one of those crazy people? Should I stay here? The best practice I find for me is when I'm having those moments where I connect my tension to my body, I'll let my body tell me what's going on. I'll be like, what am, what am I holding here? Like, what's stopping me from breathing through? And whatever arises, I just greet it with curiosity. It's vulnerable to talk about, but I do think that it is important to talk about because this is not a singular experience. This is something that we all deal with from time to time. And it's hard to find that line of vulnerability when sharing on the internet. Like, I don't really know where I stand. I know I used to post a lot where I would very, very openly and rawly share my emotions and cry on camera. Like, I don't really do that as much anymore as much but at the same time like i do think it is healthy to express emotion and especially if you've been penting it up for a long time like it will turn into bubbling anxiety which it did for me after doing all of my stretching and finally sitting i finally got to that point where i was able to just cry and just let it all out and i don't know if i'll edit it into this video it would probably make me feel so cringy to do it but this is like a normal thing especially with meditation and yoga i find this happens a lot sometimes you just do a good stretch and it finally breaks that like barrier where you can fully express the emotion, process the emotion and let it move through you. And I think that that's really, really healthy. And I was finally able to do that the other night. Anytime I ever have a good cry like that, I always feel this like sobering, grounding, 
softness, if that makes sense. It's like I get tired, but at the same time, I feel better in a way that makes me just want to like take care of myself. Like I made a full coffee talk about mothering yourself like a child. And ever since I've become a mother, I definitely feel like I better understand or better practice that with myself, especially during hard times. Like how would I mother my own child through a hard time or if he was dealing with a strong emotion or whatever it is, like how can I do that and show up for myself in that way? Bubble baths are like one of my favorite ways to just feel lush and feel so nurtured and almost like a hug. And also a lot of the times I'll either bring my book or play some music or just the other night I ended up bringing my cards because I was looking for a sense of guidance and I wanted something that would help me connect deeper to my intuition hence the spiritual self-care and I love oracle cards for that because every time I flip a card it's not necessarily the card telling me something it's more so my own subconscious telling me something based on what I see or what I feel when I read the cards. I specifically pulled from my sacred cycles and my healing mantra deck. Those have been two of my favorites lately because one, the sacred cycles deck really does connect to the cycles of life, which is something I've been feeling really inspired and navigating my own life through and really embracing my own cycles, even the cycles of emotions. And then the healing mantra deck I love because it's one simple sentence, but they're always so profound. I picked six cards and all of them I feel like really helped me anchor into what I was feeling and what guidance I was looking for and what my intuition was really saying to me through reading the cards. And I, some people aren't into that and I totally get it. To me, it's no different than like journaling with my subconscious or sitting with my subconscious or walking with my subconscious. It's just a different tool I use to really get down to what I'm feeling. It's so hard to be near you, make it hard for me to breathe. The last thing I'll talk about, which, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it isn't weird to some of you or most of you actually, but it might be weird to some. Recently, something I've been thinking about a lot or noticing a lot is like the state of my feet and like the care of my feet really directly reflects the care I'm taking of myself. Feet are your grounding space. They are what literally ground you to the earth. I exfoliated my feet, took off the chip nail polish, and painted my toenails. The wild one card that I pulled from the Sacred Cycles deck, it really spoke to me. And so I took the inspiration from the card and painted my toenails red, just to like further create that intention. All of this might sound silly, I don't know, maybe maybe not, but when I work with my spirituality, that's definitely what it boils down to is intention and symbology. Like what something means to me, what's that symbol communicating to my subconscious and to my spirit? One, and two, what is my intention with communicating with that symbol or interacting with that symbol? I then plan to make myself some tea, do a little journaling and then go to bed. However, Easton ended up waking up and it took me a while to get him back down. And then by the time I did, it, I just ended up going to bed, which to me I feel like is actually one of the best forms of self-care is just rest. That was actually one of the cards I pulled. It's like, I will feel better when I get the rest I need. 
And so I decided to just really lean into that and embrace it. Before I fell asleep on my phone and my notes app, I just wrote down a couple journal prompts that I could sit with and sleep on. I actually, I'm gonna turn that into an entire Talktober Monday post. It's the last Monday of October. So if you wanna do that journal session, that will be there. But ultimately it was really just boiling down to working through anxiety, working through fear, confronting with full radical honesty what it is you are truly afraid of, aligning with or just reminding yourself who you aspire to be. Like if you have somebody that is like a role model to you, what they would do in this situation. And I find that that helps. Again, it gives you that sense of competency and confidence in yourself that you have a sense of direction even when you do feel anxious or afraid or uncertain or sad or like a lot at once. We all feel these feelings and our reasons for feeling these feelings might be different, but the feelings are what connect us all. Like the experience of anxiety, the experience of high emotion or the experience of being so busy, you don't have time to really process your emotions or ground yourself again. So like that I think is the part that is relatable within all of us. Even for myself, knowing the behind the scenes of social media creation, that it can get easy to like get lost in the aesthetic and the prettiness of social media because it's fun and it's inspiring. Like I love it. I love fall. Like this whole month is like a giant aesthetic mood board for me. But at the same time, it's not always as common to share more of the vulnerable sides or more of the human traits and the imperfections and the hard things. So yeah. So that's what I like to do whenever I'm feeling really anxious and I'm doing a little bit of self-care and grounding and reconnecting to myself. I would love to know what you guys like to do when you have nights like this, like what really helps you move through it or just how have you been lately? How are you feeling? Checking in. And without further ado, I will chat with all of you guys tomorrow. I got to close down this vlog because I'm about to open up my laptop and do some 2017 reactions. So I will see you guys tomorrow for that. And otherwise I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye everyone. You're no one else's mm -hmm. So tell me you miss it Or tell me just how it is That you're someone else's